Oke, okay, assalamualaikum uh, and good evening uh, to all my students of MEM 341. Oke, okay, so this is our fourth uh, lecture videos that uh, supposedly to be in the YouTube uh, early of uh, this afternoon, but I have a problem with my computer PC, so I have to upload this video at the night of today lah. so you can see this video or watch this video uh, for our to, uh, as a replacement to our uh, class uh, that's supposed to be at 2 p.m for today but you can watch this video uh, uh, on your own and uh, depends on your time what you want uh, what what Uh, when do you want to see this video? Okay, uh, so this is the chapter 4 uh, These notes uh, you can download from the our Google Classroom So our chapter 4 is entitled Hydraulic Actuator uh, Learning outcome of this chapter should uh, be uh, The hydraulic cylinders, uh, hydraulic motors And this is the introductions uh, The difference between what is pump and what is the actuator. Actuator uh, means that you extract energy from the fluid and convert it to mechanical energy to perform useful work. Uh, as in easy words, actuator is the final uh, components in our fluid system. The actuator will do the work. The work comes from the fluid energy. Fluid energy comes from the pump here. Pump. Uh, at the first place, uh, it convert the uh, electrical energy or something as before that to the hydraulic energy uh, or sometimes we call the fluid energy and then the actuator use that energy from the pump to convert it to mechanical energy uh, for the useful or functioning work. Okay, this uh, uh, the type of the actuators uh, there is linear and also rotary so uh, for the linear the work uh, will be on the push or pull in the straight line and for the rotary it will be uh, in the rotary path lah. okay uh, this one is for the linear hydraulic cylinder this one is hydraulic motors so motors you uh, will do it in the rotational work and this one is linear work Okay, retract and expand. This one is the rotary or rotational energy here. Okay, so this is the hierarchy or ranking of the hydraulic actuator. Uh, just like what I said before, we have the linear actuator and also rotary actuator, which is uh, this is we call the uh, hydraulic cylinder, and this one is the hydraulic motor. Okay. And under the linear actuator, uh, actuator, we also have two types of the actuators. Uh, the, the first one is the single acting cylinder and the second one is double acting cylinder here. Okay. Uh, and for the rotary or motor, uh, we have the one type uh, limited rotational motor and the other one is continuous rotational motor. So limited rotational motor, uh, it is not a complete loop of a rotation but This one will be continuous loop of rotation. Okay. Uh, let me check first my recording. Is it okay or not? Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, the hydraulic cylinder. Uh, this uh, uh, the what you call the description of the our hydraulic cylinder. It operate uh, by allowing pressurized fluid enter the chamber between the barrel and piston a basic hydraulic cylinder consists of piston piston rod and barrel uh, you can see from this diagram uh, this is our piston this is the rod and this is the barrel barrel is the like uh, uh, the casing of the rod and piston okay uh, pressurized fluid will apply force on the piston surface This one is the uh, piston, and it is uh, this is the surface of the piston. And rod 
out or into the barrel it will push the piston and the rod here will go out or expand or go in uh, retract so it will go forward backward forward backward depends on the uh, fluid force acting on which direction okay so uh, next one is the amount of external force can be moved depend on the piston size and operating pressure so you can set the force of the piston uh, by using the sizing of the piston and also uh, the the value of the pressure so if you put in the system a very large piston in the fluid power system you put in a large piston and also high pressure so the force will also will be larger okay so it depends on the size and also the pressure of the fluid okay uh, the extending uh, or retracting speed is governed by the barrel size and hydraulic fluid flow okay so the speed uh, of the movement of this piston uh, either it go to extend expand or retract uh, it is depending on the barrel size this one is barrel size and also the fluid flow rate still remember the flow rate flow rate uh, in the unit of meter cube per second so size of the barrel and the fluid flow rate uh, size of the barrel and fluid flow rate will uh, set the speed of the piston but the size of piston and operating pressure will set determine the value of force okay so that is for the hydraulic cylinder and you can see from this diagram uh, we have the single acting here and also the back acting okay so this is a uh, description about the single or double acting cylinder the single one as a, uh, the diagram here we have only one inlet okay one inlet here uh, this is inlet okay so uh, it says that can exert force in only the extending direction so uh, inlet here liquid will fluid or liquid liquid liquids uh, will fill in this uh, what you call cavity it's not cavity it's uh, this space in the piston so it will force the piston to one direction if this is the inlet so it will expand in this direction Okay. Uh, for the retraction or it will move backward uh, it will go naturally by the gravity or the spring okay compressive spring or the gravity so let's say we have the spring here as the symbol like this spring the liquid or oil means that uh, hydraulic fluid will fill in here so it will force the piston to go this direction and if we shut down our hydraulic system and there is no liquid enter the system so it will retract back by uh, the act of a compressive spring force here or if it uh, it is in the upside down direction the gravity from the above will push it downward like that so that is the single uh, acting single acting cylinder uh, and for the double acting cylinder we have two inlet means that it also uh, one of them is the outlet so if you uh, fill in the space here this one act as the inlet and it will push the force expand in this direction but if we fill in the liquid from this inlet and it will move to this directions so 
they uh, it has two inlet either way it can move the piston uh, based on the inlet direction okay so that is about the double acting cylinder the diagram it uh, will be extended at slight pace okay so this is the application in the back hole this one is excavator i think okay excavator here we have a hydraulic cylinder here uh, for its arm and this one also is hydraulic cylinder and connected to the final one of the hydraulic cylinder here and then it will perform works means that if uh, this excavator will dig out the sand or soil okay so the final actuator is here okay uh, this is the equation of uh, how to calculate force velocity and power in the actuator okay so for the force if it is uh, in the extension work uh, pressure times the area of the pistons cross-sectional area of the pistons p means for the pistons okay for the velocity uh, the equation is volume flow rate over cross-sectional area of the pistons okay for the power we have uh, equal to force times velocity velocity here is uh, in term of uh, radio per second okay and for the retraction yeah uh, it differs to the equation of the extension because you just uh, have smaller cross-sectional area which uh, lies in this diagram the cross-sectional area have to uh, minus the cross-sectional area of the rod let's say like this right okay so during your retraction you have to uh, deduce or you have to minus the area of all uh, the piston cross-sectional area of the piston you have to minus with the cross-sectional area of the rods it's here right okay similar to this so only the shaded area here is considered to be in the equation here okay but during the extension here like this there is no rod involved uh, to uh, to the fluid force here so that's why during the extension we have the fully cross-sectional area that we consider but uh, during the retraction uh, we have to minus the area with the rod area because it uh, it just has a uh, force acting on the uh, shaded area in this diagram okay so this is the example how to calculate the force velocity and power okay uh, i try to show you uh, how to solve this uh, problem a pump supply oil at 0 0.016 meter cube per second this one is the volume flow rate okay to a 40 millimeter diameter double acting cylinder so this is diameter of the pistons so i put it a piston 40 mm if you want to convert to meter square area uh, you have to calculate diameter times uh, pi d so this one is square right remember a equal to pi over d times pi over 4 sorry pi over 4 times d squared okay uh, if the load is 5,000 newton, this is the force extending and retracting and the 
uh, diameter is 20 millimeters. So this is the D for the road. Then you have okay. Yeah, I put here for the A pistons. Okay, so diameter of the road is zero. It's not zero. It's twenty. Twenty m m. Okay. So that's all the information uh, that has given in the question. Okay. So how to calculate? Okay. For the A hydraulic pressure during the extending stroke, first from the force over A is equal to pressure, then force from the 5000 here uh, divided by area for the pistons during during the stroke. Extending stroke means that uh, only we use the total area of the pistons we don't have to uh, minus the area of the piston with the rod so not yet so we just use pi over 4 times 0 0.04 meter square uh, square so you will get the value of uh, wait, uh, shift pi So the value is three nine seven eight eight seven three PA. Okay, so equivalence around the one to six three thirty nine point eight bar. Okay, so that's the answer for the A. And for B, piston velocity during the extending stroke. Uh, the equation here can be referred to this table. Uh, what is the velocity equation here? Q in over area of the pistons. So input flow also equal to the uh, flow rate here. 0 0.016. Okay, that's the value is given in the question over the area that uh, the similar value uh, that we calculated in the A here and you will get the value of 0 0.016 1.0 to 7 meter per second okay and for the power during the extending the stroke extension uh, the equation from here uh, is force times velocity okay so the piston velocity is 1 0.27 meter per second times with the force uh, 5000 newton then you will get six three five zero what okay the unit of the power is what okay and now we go to the D, uh, hydraulic pressure during the retracting stroke. Okay, so for A, B, and C, we calculate for the extension process, extension work. But now for the D, E, and F, the question wants us to find the hydraulic pressure, velocity, and power during the retraction. So uh, it differs a bit. Uh, compared to the extension work because uh, just like 
in this table, the equation is uh, a bit different where the area here, you have to minus with the area of the rod. Uh, that's, that, that is not the only difference here. Okay, so you can uh, recalculate from this equation, from our calculation here, uh, but you have to change the area, area, because the area now uh, will be different. Okay. Uh, okay. This is the area of the rod. This is the area of the piston. So I don't want to calculate all for you. You have to do uh, the calculation by your own. Uh, uh, it is very easy because I have already show you uh, how to calculate A, B, and C, and you just repeat the calculation for the D, E, and F. Uh, just only you have to change the total area here. Okay, so that's for the example two point, uh, to example one. Okay, now we go to the hydraulic motor. Hyd that one is the what? Call hydraulic cylinder. Hydraulic cylinder means that there is only the linear motion occurs in the system. Uh, there will be retraction or extension, go forward or backward. Okay, that's the only action for the hydraulic cylinder. Okay, and now for the hydraulic motor, there will be the rotational work. Okay, this is the basics uh, fundamental of the hydraulic motor. Hydraulic motor are called rotary actuator. Uh, they convert fluid pressure and flow into top and rotational movement. All basic hydraulic motor consists of three component groups. Uh, there is a housing, rotating internal parts, power output shaft. Here, power output shaft. Hydraulic motor are also known as redesigned pump. Okay, so <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, uh, you can read uh, the details here by your own. I uh, want to go faster. Okay, this uh, is the uh, the types of the hydraulic motors. There are gears vein pistons so you can see the description here you can compare the uh, difference between the gears vein and pistons uh, based on this information operating pressure for the gears uh, can be operated at a maximum of 14 megapascal uh, vein 70 megapascal and piston 35 mega, uh, megapascal uh, pascal. so uh, basically the piston is the uh, most performer here it has the highest performance here okay uh, so this is the diagram uh, for the motor gear uh, internal gear motor this is the piston motor this is the vein motor okay and now these are the equations to find the top power and flow rate for the hydraulic motor okay uh, this is the example I show you how to calculate a basic simple equation here uh, a hydraulic motor has 82 centimeter cube volumetric displacement okay this one you have to put the symbol of VD so V means for the uh, volume volume D is the displacement VD here equal to 82 centimeter cube. If it has a pressure rating of 70 bar, uh, 70 bar is the P, and it receives oil from the 0 0.006 meter cube per second theoretical flow rate pump. Okay, so is this is the Q. Theoretical, I mean, I put it symbol T. Okay, then find speed. Okay, from the equation here, QT equal to VD times N. N uh, is the revolution per minute. 
and VD is meter cube per revolution. Uh, where the value of VD uh, in the question here it says that that is the volumetric displacement. So for every one revolution, uh, there will be 82 centimeter cube. So that is why we have to put here centimeter cube per revolution like that unit for VD. Okay, and now for the speed, let's calculate the speed. I rearrange this equation to be like this. Okay, VD, here we have the value. Uh, they want the speed. This one is the speed. Revolution per minute. Okay, but if you calculate directly 0 0.006 meter cube per second, the, the value of QD here. QT, I put it here, QT. And divide by the VD, where we have the unit of meter cube per revolution. When it cancel off, you will have the unit of revolution per second. If you want to convert, if you want to convert the revolution to the radius, uh, radius per second, you have to multiply with the 2 pi radian. Because one revolution equal to two pi radian, and but for this one, if they want the RPM, oh sorry, RMP, pula. Kalau awak nak tukar kepada RPM, okay, daripada revolution per second. Kalau contoh sekarang 7.6 kita ada Revolution ni maksudnya Ni revolution ni Okay Saya tak ke atas Revolution ni stands for Aduh Apa jadi ni Okay, revolution ni. Hai, apa ni? Revolution per minute. Maksudnya berapa revolution dalam satu minit kan? Okay. Sekarang ni, kita nak ubah uh, So, revolution per minute Awak nak ubah jadi ni dari dalam unit ni Daripada revolution per second kan Okay, so sekarang ni kita kena cancel second sekarang Jadi nak cancel second, kena darab dengan second Betul? Okay, sebelum darab dengan second Apa jadilah Kita kena wujudkan minit Barulah kita dapat unit dalam bentuk macam ni Revolution per minit Kan Okay Ni jadi cara dia Kena darab dengan second Sebab kita boleh matikan second Tapi revolution maintain Minit Kena wujudkan Jadi kita boleh wujudkan Tapi kita kena darab dengan constant So, dalam satu minit, ada berapa second? Sama, darab dengan 60 lah. 60 second sama dengan satu minit kan? Ha, so, dapat dalam unit revolution per minit. Okay. Jadi, berapa tu? Tujuh poin enam darab enam puluh. So, awak dapat uh, <coughs> 456 revolution per minute. Tapi kita tak letak unit ni biasa. Kita letak unit RPM. Oh Allah, kenapa nak share RMP ni? RPM. Sebab revolution per minute equal to RPM lah kan? Short form dia, uh, unit dia dalam short form RPM. Okay, so... 
Ni jawapan kita uh, Dia nak dalam RPM jadilah 4, 5, 6 RPM Saya ada masalah dengan RMP ni Raya meneruskan pengajian Student PA RMP PA saya Ok Dah dapat jawab Speed uh, For the top uh, Rumus dia Dekat sini Ok uh, Volumetric displacement Darab dengan pressure Bahagi dengan 2 pi Ok jadi Straight forward lah Kita dah ada jawapan kat atas VD kita uh, Berapa tadi Ah, uh, 82 cm cube Apa ni? Okay, pressure kita 70 bar 1 bar sama dengan 100 ribu kan So, 10 kuasa 5 Okay, pascal bahagi dengan 2 pi dapatlah unit ni ok so tu jawapan untuk top awak kira lah sendiri uh, untuk power berapa ok kita kira lah 82 Bagi dengan 2 pi 91 Point 3 5 4 9 Newton meter Ok ni talk Theoretical talk uh, Power Theoretical power job, uh, Dalam pada rumus ni Theoretical power adalah Talk tadi darab dengan Radian per second Uh, speed in radian per second Yang kita ada tadi jawapan dia dalam revolution per second Ataupun RPM kan uh, Kena convert lagi kepada bentuk radian per second Okey, yang ni saya dah letak So talk kita, kita dah dapat jawapan Eh, berapa jawapan tadi? Tak Aduh Oh Okay N Radian per second Kita dah ada jawapan 7.6 revolution per second Awak nak tukar kepada radian per second Awak kena darab dengan 2 pi So, jawapan dia Sini jadi 47.75 radian per second. So, masukkan jawapan ni dalam sini. Jadilah 91.35 darab 47.75. 4361.96 watt. Ok, itu jawapan dia untuk power. Okay, uh, uh, so saya dah tunjuk lah cara nak jawab uh, speed, theoretical torque and also theoretical power for the hydraulic motor yang tadi example kat atas tadi kita kira untuk hydraulic cylinder yang ni kan okay. sekarang ni rumus-rumus yang baru ni untuk hydraulic motor ok sekarang ni kita pergi ke 
performance nak macam mana nak kira how to calculate the performance of the hydraulic motor okay for uh, volumetric efficiency we have qt over qa qt ni uh, flow rate yang teori theoretical flow rate over actual flow rate qa okay untuk mechanical efficiency uh, we have to calculate the torque Top of uh, actual top over theoretical top. Equation for the top sama je. Okay, sama dengan ni. Cuma ni nanti kita kena bezakan yang mana satu actual, yang mana satu top. So kalau dalam soalan dia depends on the ah uh, on the question lah. Ah uh, ah uh, if the question says that that is the value of the actual top, so tu adalah actual top. Ha, vice versa. Tapi Nak calculate dia sama lagi dengan equation ni untuk dapatkan torque. Okay, so efficiency. Ah, uh, if we want to combine the efficiency of the volumetric efficiency and mechanical efficiency, so you have to multiply it. Multiply volumetric efficiency, m ah uh, mv. Let's say mv times the n m. Yeah, I, I forgot what is the name for the Greek letter. Uh, oh, no service. Uh, so never mind. Uh, this is the equation of the overall efficiency. So you have to multiply uh, volumetric efficiency with the mechanical efficiency. So uh, the difference here is the symbol. V volumetric and mechanical O here is overall. Okay. Uh, so this is the example. A hydraulic motor has a displacement of one six four centimeter cube. So this is the VD, and operate with a pressure of seventy bar. Centi bar seventy bar is the uh, pressure, and speed of two thousand RPM. So this one is the N speed. If the actual flow rate consumed by the motor is 0 0.06 meter cube per second, so this one is the QA actual, and the actual torque de delivered by the motor is 170 meter meter. So this is the torque actual. Okay, now the question asks us to find MV. So this is the volumetric efficiency. The equation of volumetric efficiency, if you refer to this slide. Uh, it is a QT over QA, right? Okay, so I write it down here. QT over QA. Uh, the value of QT. Uh, this one is the QA. Over 0 0.006, right? Okay. Mm, okay. Uh, and then you have to multiply with your hundred percent to get the value of MV in form of percentage. But our problem here is we don't have the value of QT. So how to get the value of QT? Okay, you can refer to this equation that we have done in example here. The value of QT can be obtained from this equation where it is equal to volumetric displacement times with the speed. Okay, so... Uh, okay, QT equal to 2000 the RPM 
ki put qt equal to vt times i uh, sorry uh the speed equal to qt times vd right qt equal to vd times speed So this all wrong. Mm. Of a uh, uh, VD times speed. So the value of VD is one six four times ten to the power of six times the speed in the RPM two thousand. Okay, is it correct? Two thousand RPM, and the equation here also must be in the unit of RPM. And you will get the value of kt equal to 164 the power 10 of minus 6 times 2000 and I get the value 0 0.328 meter cube per second okay so substitute in the into this equation you will get 0 0.328 over 0 0.06 oh there is something wrong here I should not delete Okay, uh, I think I need to take a break first. Uh, okay, let's have a break, five minutes break. But uh, tak ada masalah ke awak lah, awak boleh pause your video kan. Tapi saya uh, yang perlukan rehat. Okay, lima minit rehat bagi saya. Uh, we continue with our example <clears throat> okay so the QT uh, equal to VD volumetric displacement times with the N so if the VD in the unit of meter cube per revolution so N it also should be in the revolution per second but if you want to maintain to use the 2000 rpm unit here so it will be revolution per minute right okay so finally the equation will be uh, the unit will be the meter cube per revolution times with the revolution per minute and then you will get the unit of meter cube per meter cube per minute okay so vd vd 164 times 10 to the power of 6 here if we convert the centimeter cube to the meter cube you have to multiply with the to the power of 3 here right okay so times with the 2000 okay this is the unit and you will get the value the answer of qt okay, so uh one six four ten to the power of minus six times two thousand and you will get zero point three two eight meter cube per minute but be aware 
this is meter cube per minute and this 0 0.06 for the QA here is the meter cube per second so you have to divide by 60 to get the meter cube per second and finally the value of QT is 0 0.0055 5 meter cube per second and substitute into this equation 0 0.0055 to divide with the 0 0.06 so final answer is 91% uh, Okay, so that's for the uh, volumetric efficiency and now we have to calculate the mechanical efficiency here. Uh, the equation of mechanical effic efficiency is the torque, actual torque over the theoretical torque. Uh, the uh, value of the uh, theoretical uh, actual torque is already given in the question 170 newton meter this one ta okay so we now have to find the theoretical top value by using the equation that is given in the previous slide here okay vd times pressure over 2 pi so you rearrange that equation and then you will get this equation uh, VD, we know that there is the value of 164 times 10 to the power of minus 6 and times the pressure value. Pressure is given in the question here, which is 70 bar. 70 bar equals to 70 times uh, 100,000, uh, 10 to the power of 5 over 2 pi. So just calculate 164 times 1070 over 2 pi so I get 182.7 newton meter torque so substitute into here 170 over 172.7 times 100 percent so you will get Ninety three percent. Okay, so that is the answer for mechanical efficiency B question and C. You have to calculate this is not C, this is the D. Okay, for C, you have to cal uh, calculate uh, ninety one percent. Sorry, 91% times 93%. 0 0.91. 91 times 0 0.93. So the overall efficiency is... 84.63%. Okay. And finally, the actual power delivered by the motor. Uh, and then uh, the equation of the power is the actual torque times with the uh, speed in radian per second. <coughs> so TA, <coughs> TA uh, equal to 170 times 2 pi VD. VD is 164, 10 to the minus uh, 6. And you will get... Zero point one seven five watt. Is it correct? Mm. VD Power Power 
top times radio per second Oh, sorry. Ah, we have two thousand RPM. Top right, and you have to convert uh RPM into radian per second. So you. I'm sweeter. One revolution equal to two pi radian, and uh, one minute equal to sixty second. So you can validate the unit. Radian, okay, state at radian revolution have to be cancelled. So you will get the value of n 2000 times 2 pi over 60. So the speed in the radian per second is 209.44 radian per second. So here I Okay, two o nine point four four. So we have wrong answer here. One seventy times two zero nine point four four. So it will be thirty five thousand six hundred and four point eight watt. If we convert into kilowatt is thirty five point six kilowatt. So this is the final answer for the D, the actual power. Okay. So let's move to the next slide this is the application of hydraulic motor hydrostatic transmission okay a system consists uh, of a prime mover a hydraulic pump a hydraulic motor and appropriate valve and conductor that can provide adjustable speed drive can be found in tractors rollers front end loaders hose and lift truck the the advantages of the hydrostatic transmission it has the infinitely variable speed and torque in either direction and over the full range uh, extremely high power to weight ratio ability to be stalled without damage low inertia of rating members fast starting and stopping with smoothness and precision flexibility and simplicity of design so uh, this is the example of the hydrostatic transmission i don't know what this is ni lan mawa kan potong potong rumput kan mesti potong rumput kot okay uh, so this is the uh, Diagram, uh, pump output here. Uh, pump is driven by the prime mover. This is the input power, 
and the oil go to the motor to drive the motor as the actuator and then uh, there will be output from that motor in term of torque and speeds okay so the liquid will returns back to the reservoir and reservoir will be used again cycle back in the closed loop here if there is a leakage here so there will be the loss power in the output okay and now this is an uh, example of the application uh, you can uh, calculate by your own based on the example that I have shown earlier in upper slide okay uh, quite similar to the calculation that I have uh, written in this video so you can do by your own and the uh, calculation of yours uh, should be submitted to me as the question discussion and answer in our google classroom so uh, you have to take picture or snap picture using cam scanner or something that can convert into the pdf uh, you put it into the google drive and then you share link to that picture or PDF uh, by submitting in our Google Classroom. Okay. So, uh, good luck. Uh, please try this example if you have any problem. Uh, you can ask me in the Google Classroom and also WhatsApp group. Okay. Uh, uh, so, this is the end of our chapter 4. Uh, okay uh, that's all for today uh, once again don't forget to uh, fill up uh, the attendance form and also complete this problem try to answer this problem and after you complete the, 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 sol uh, the problem here you uh, put the solution in the Google Drive and share uh, in uh, share the link uh, in our Google Classroom. Okay, so uh, Assalamualaikum uh, and now good night. Sekarang dah pukul 11.30 kan? Okay, selamat malam. Selamat sejahtera and goodbye.